Hello everybody and welcome to our webinar all about our business courses. This session is specially designed for our international offer holders who will be joining us for the September 2023 intake. The session is recorded just so if anybody's internet drops out we will be able to share a copy of the recording with you in the coming weeks as well. Um, now there's quite a lot of information that we're going to go through today um, so as we say you might want to watch it back a couple of times as well. But I'll just introduce you to our panellists today. So my name's Kat and I work in the International Office. Hi everybody, my name's Jess and I work with Kat in the International Office. Hello everybody, I'm Susie Du. I'm from the Business School as the Deputy Associate Dean for Postgraduate Student Experience. Hi everybody, my name's Ellen and I also work in the International Office. Excellent. So you're in good hands today, everybody. Um, if you do have any questions throughout the session, please do use the Q&A button on your screen and our panellists will be answering them at the end as well. Um, but just to give you an idea of what we're going to go through today, you'll be having an introduction all about your school of study, so Hertfordshire Business School. Then we'll give you a brief update on start of term preparation, so some things that you can do now to help you with your planning. And then we'll go to the Q&A where we'll be reading out your questions live, so add them into the Q&A box whenever you've got a question. Now, before we do start with the slides, we're just going to do a quick poll to see who we've got in the room. You might have some future classmates in the audience with you as well. So, which subject will you be studying when you join Hearts in September? Now, that poll was popped up on your screen now, so you can find the subject which closely matches what you'll be studying. So we've got things from accounting and finance, business administration, business analytics and consultancy, economics, event management and tourism, human resource management, international business, marketing, advertising and digital media management and project management or you might be coming to do an MBA as well. So I can see lots of you have started filling in the poll which is brilliant. I'll just leave that open for another moment or so just to give everybody else a chance to as well. If you are just joining the session um, we have just launched a poll. If you want to join in that's brilliant and you can just click your on-screen button so you can let us know what subject you'll be coming to study with us in September. So I'll just leave that open for another moment because um, I can see people are still inputting their answers now, which is brilliant that you're getting involved. This is excellent. OK, I'm going to close the polling in a minute. So if you are just about to hit that submit button, please do so now. OK, perfect. So we'll have a look at these results together. So we can see we've got a really good mix of people here. Lots of people here for management or project management courses and international business. And then all the other programmes got a really good mix of you. So you probably do have future classmates in the audience with you today as well. If you didn't get a chance to answer the poll and you do want to share what programme you'll be studying, feel free to use the chat feature um, and then you can get chatting to some classmates as well while we're doing the presentations. Um, but what we'll do now is I'll pass to my colleague Susie, who's going to give you a bit of an introduction all about Hertfordshire Business School. Thank you, Kat, and um, thank you everybody for joining the session. It's a great Great pleasure and to meet you here and a great opportunity for you to get to know a little bit more about the school, which I'm going to talk to you through. And obviously any questions will be welcomed at the very end. And then some of you can always type your questions in the chat as well. OK, thank you. Okay, next slide. So obviously the business school, um, our vision is transforming students as learners, professionals, enabling you to play your part in a global economy by challenging and innovating business thinking. So that's our slogan, the business school and our mission. And I hope, you know, throughout your studies, you're able to achieve all those. OK, so the business school is um, has been shortlisted for the best business school in the UK for two years running. And obviously, we're a top 25 nationally for business and management studies and research impact. And we have a, a number of uh, courses that is available for students to choose. Um, some of you have already put your business subject area in the pool earlier. 
So our student and staff bodies are diverse and very international as well, which provides you this international facing experience. And 20% of our students from overseas means, you know, you can make contacts with your peers, classmates from around the world, okay? It could be somebody from your own country and different regions, and you may meet somebody if you're lucky from your own region. So this is a great opportunity as well, okay? And we do deliver close to 20 scheduled learning activities per year and supporting more than 1 million hours of transformative student learning. So this kind of gives you an overview of the business school, the skill and the diverse, uh, and then the international facing of that, okay? So next slide. So in terms of the facilities in the business school, and obviously we have all the essential, you know, uh, facilities, support services, just to give you an idea of the facilities, as you can see from the screen, and a modern, stylish, world-class, um, you know, facilities and the environment. And especially, you know, no matter you're doing taught degree or you're doing research, a just, you know, great environment um, and university to be in. So the one you've seen on the screen is called Enterprise Hub. It's a brand new that's been built in 2021, I believe. So it's kind of have a de dedicated business incubation facility designed to support business startups and graduate and entrepreneurs. For any of you who are very entrepreneurial, innovative, you may use the facility in there. So upstairs has the incubation center where some of the business startups and employers are located in there as well. You can share ideas and you know, get inspired. And, you know, it's just a really great opportunity there. And in the in the enterprise hub and across the across the business school, you have a bookable meeting rooms. If you want to have a um, small group, you know, rehearsal your presentation or work on your assessment. So it's really handy for you. And obviously we have the modern professional engagement space, you know, either socially or professionally, as you can see on the screen. And obviously in the enterprise hub is an opportunity that you can collaborate with leading businesses, network, networking with people, you know, like-minded as well. And as some of you who do final research project, that is opportunity, you may want to reach out to the local businesses to do, to look into the business problems, do a real life project as well, okay? So next slide. So obviously, besides the facilities, um, and we ha you have a great opportunities, and um, because of the school, the university has excellent connections and are collaborating with leading businesses, as we mentioned. And I know some of you probably on a salvage program. And although for salvage program, you have to look for the placement yourselves, but the school does have connections with local businesses and post the job vacancies and host the job fairs for you as well. And as I mentioned earlier, you can do practical project placement um, with the local businesses. And also, as you know, you know the proximity for our university to London, um, which is another advantage, yeah? And besides the facilities, the great connections we have, and we have to, we are very proud in a business school. We have wonderful student support. And beyond the university's central support on your academic studies and pastoral support, in the business school, we have our own designated team. So for your academic studies, for example, in uh, where you're coming from, you may not you may not be very familiar with, for example, referencing, critical thinking. And here we have a team called Center for Academic Skills Enhancement, a team of 20 academic member of staff there to support you and help you. For some of you, you may have the academic English for business embedded in your module, the subject you're studying. So you're not only studying the subject knowledge, but there will be designated academic English and academic support alongside the module, you know, help you to understand you know the key terminologies understand the assignment what is required and the academic expectations what's being expected for the assignment for the module and for your course okay and obviously all these supports are delivered uh, by professional member of staff and they are tailored to your needs for most of you are international students here 
Uh, and obviously for undergraduate students, you will have opportunities to choose a language as well. So, you know, just to mention about the international exposure of the business school. So there are listed five languages you can choose currently, but there's a provision to expand it and it's to extend it to postgraduate student on their second year advanced research. So just watch the space. Some of you may be lucky uh, for postgrad as well to join these language classes. Yeah, and all the classes have beginners, advanced, so it depends on your um, on your level of the particular language. Okay, so next slide. So next slide, I have got um, something to mention. Obviously, we talked about the facilities, the connections we have, the opportunities and the support within the business school. And then now I just wanted to quickly show you the student life. Okay, so um, Kat, are you able to broadcast click the link? Oh. Um, do you have the link? You can drop me the link in Teams, Susie, and I'll um brilliant. Yeah. Apologies, everybody. Let me share this very quickly. Uh, and obviously, as we said, beyond your academic studies, um, and then where you can utilize all the support, utilize all the facilities, take the opportunities which has been um, mentioned above. But in the meantime, we would love all of you to have a great student experience, enjoy yourselves, and um, and really expose the diversity, the community, and engage widely with the with the community and take the opportunity of the events that's being offered to you. Okay, so Kat, I drop the link to you in the Teams chat. Brilliant, thank you. We'll be with you just shortly, everyone, to show you this um, this great piece. I'll just see if I can load that up as well, Susie. Thank you. Thank you. Just waiting for it to come through. Um, just while we're waiting, everybody, we can see that you are asking some fantastic questions today as well. Um, do check out the answered questions as well, because we've got our team in the background who are answering as many questions as possible while the presentation's ongoing. So you might actually see that some people have already asked something um, that you were going to ask as well. So do check that out, because you might see that somebody else has already asked the same question as you. Um, I can't see the, the link in Teams yet. Sorry, Susie. I don't know if you oh. could try resending. Apologies. Oh, as a video, let me have a look at it. Just one second, everybody. Or have you got the video there with you, Susie? Because we could yes, just share your me... screen temporarily oh, if you really. want. Yeah, that's true. Let me share with you. Uh, how do I share my screen here? Brilliant. Okay. Can everybody see my screen here? Excellent. Yeah, it's showing now. Thanks, okay. Susie. Brilliant. Thank you.
thank you, Kurt. And um, I think that's uh, obviously you couldn't hear the the audio, I'm afraid, but actually that was just background music. So I hope students feel the sense of the range of activities. These are being initiated by the students and, um, and the video is done by our talented students. So we had cultural events, we had a movie night, we had, you know, International Women's Day, Women's Day, we had Afro Asian, you know, cross-cultural events. It's just really diverse and celebrating the, the, the diversity and, you know, the community as well. So you, as you can see from the screen, they did dances, they did singing, they did fashion show, and they did talented show and music instruments. It's just really amazing. And I really hope this gives our students um, in, on this call an uh, idea how lively, how vibrate the campus can be, but we would really like even more students, all of you to be taking part of it. If you're not taking part, you may not feel, you know, you may not have the feel of it. Thank you, Kate. I think this video is about a students from MSc Strategic Marketing and telling, um, I, I think there are three students talking about why they choose, is that for, sorry, for accounting, isn't it? So why the student choose this particular program. And it may, it may not necessarily be directly related to your program, but this gives you an idea why they choose it, which, you know, hopefully echoes to some of your rationales, motivations for joining us. Okay, thank you, Kate. So there was actually quite a few factors as to why I wanted to come to this university specifically. Um, first off, because I could do French alongside my accounting degree, so I have the opportunity to do the language that I wanted to continue doing, as well as doing the accounting, which is the career path that I want to take. Secondly, you get a lot of exemptions with your professional body doing this degree. Finally, I came to an open day and everyone was actually really friendly compared to other universities that I'd actually visited and that sort of made my mind up. In your first year you start off covering all the basics so even if you've never done any type of accounting before you build your knowledge up from the basics. In your second year it splits off into more specifics and then in your third year you advance on what knowledge you've built up over the past two years so you don't necessarily need any prior like knowledge of accounting as such to do accounting. You just kind of need to know what it is um, and why you want to do it. But the course, like it helps you build your professionalism for going into the real world. It's more tailored towards like a professional environment rather than an academic environment. All of my lecturers are chartered accountants. So they've either an academic or they have been in the industry, they know what a company is looking for when they see a CV in terms of like other help that you can get. The lecturers are literally more than happy to help you at any point. Um, you can email any of them, arrange a time to go to the office to see them and they will do their utmost best to help you understand what you don't understand. Since day one, I remember not being overly confident. I'd just moved to a different part of the country. Didn't really know my surroundings at all. Whereas now I'd quite happily like hop on a train, go into London on my own, do anything on my own, like talk to a lot of people without really being bothered about it. Um, in terms of skills, um, definitely IT skills. My IT skills were not particularly strong when I started. I'm hoping that eventually I get a job in audit um, with an auditor's company as such. Um, doesn't have to be one of the big four, just some, just like I'd prefer to go into external audit rather than working in management accounting. Um, I am hoping to do a year out in France, essentially a gap year as such, being an English assistant in the north of France. So hoping to do that before I jump into the corporate world. So obviously there's a, as I mentioned, you know, so for a particular course, but you can see some of the facilities showed in the video. You can you can hear our students for the, you know, what kind of support we offer, what the 
academic member of staff, the faculty are like. So hopefully you utilize all these support and the wonderful resources offered at the school, okay? And just to mention, obviously, you know, you are all motivated, I believe, you know, has your own reason choosing the program and are coming abroad to study on your program. It's a lot of investment, not only in terms of the financially, but the time, you know, your effort, and then could be, you know, also about your families, you know, who are supporting you um, at the back. I just wanted to mention, we do hope you engage academically as well as socially to, you know, achieve your ultimate, ultimate best. Uh, but I believe you're all going to attend and engage with other studies, but it's very important to make you aware for uh, for the legal purposes, because you're all uh, international students on this call are sponsored by tier four visa. So uh, therefore, there are expectations that we have to meet with the legal requirement. For example, you have to start your course on the program start date. And I did see some students asking when's the course start date. So um, I, th I think that will be answered. So obviously our term starts on the Monday, 26th of September. So you're all expected to be here. If you can't be here, you have to get in touch with the international office, let them know. And then you're expected to attend all the classes that is scheduled on your personal timetable. So you need to come in for the particular module or subject for lectures, for tutorials. And you're also expect to engage with all the learning materials that you're expected to, to engage. For example, you may be asked to read a particular chapter of the book before you come to the lecture, or you may be expected to have read the case studies that will be discussed in your tutorial sessions. So this is what we call called engagement. So you don't necessarily have to come in class to engage, to, to engage, but you have to do the self-study independently. And then we are using a VLE called Canvas. So you have to engage with Canvas and then download or read the materials that's been prepared um, by your academic member of staff, yeah? So just to note all your attendance and engagement. So you're physically coming on campus to the classes as well as your engagement, independent studies and engagement with the Canvas materials will be monitored. OK, so if your engagement is below 80 percent, so there's a there's a risk of you will be withdrawn from the program. And obviously your student visa will be. The university will stop um, sponsoring you, so you will be withdrawn from the program and from the university. OK, so therefore it comes to the very important part. You need to ensure at this stage, I believe some of you are looking for accommodations, where to live, and what is the access and then distance to the university. So it's important that you do your thorough research, taking into consideration, taking into consideration of the time, uh, the cost as well. So you live somewhere nearby on an easy commute to campus, yeah, to ensure you're able to attend all the timetabled or scheduled sessions and you know, engage with your learning, as well as use all the facilities and resources that we've mentioned above, okay? So just to make you aware, um, this is very vital for all international students with a tier four student visa. If you feel to engage with the expected level, you will be withdrawn. University doing every week during the teaching weeks monitoring. So every two weeks, the school will get a report. So if you're not able to meet the expectation, so there's a risk of being withdrawn from the course, from the university. However, in the meantime, we understand there are circumstances which may prevent you to attend sessions. For example, you know, if you're sick for two weeks, uh, if you have to do a little surgery because of an accident. So in this case, you need to inform your program team or your personal tutor. So therefore, there's a note under your, under your record, and then you need to also make plans how to catch up with your studies that you've missed, okay? Um, Kate, next one. So I think there's a the accreditation and career prospect. And then um, when we mentioned about the support, and uh, there's one thing I did mention is the career support, uh, career employment. Uh, and obviously for students on sandwich route, you will have a designated, uh, we call future success team in the in the business school uh, to support you. There's a designated module called preparation for the workplace. And they will support you, you know, polish your CV or LinkedIn profile, and, and then you know, um, enhance your interview 
uh, skills, so on and so forth. So through that embedded module. But for other students, as I mentioned earlier at the beginning, there will be job fairs, there will be other opportunities, um, local employers, the enterprise hub, the incubation center for you to engage, you know, expose your, your career horizon. Uh, also, a lot of our courses are accredited, accredited uh, and then for the for the business school, as you can see, as a listed, we are well renowned professional accreditations, including and not exclusively to that as we continue moving forward. OK. Um, yeah, please do utilize the opportunities and be proud of yourself, you know, in your own program. OK, next one. I think this is a particular video uh, from a. Uh, master MSc marketing students. The earlier one was more of an undergrad from accounting as a representative, and this was from marketing. Just, just hear what the students say and what the support, the facility, and why she chose the program as well. Okay, thank you, Kate. Hello everyone, I'm Ali Turab Qureshi from Pakistan. I study MSc in Marketing from the University of Hertfordshire. I chose this program specifically because of the international diversity it offers. And yes, it's a global world, so I wanted to have different marketing perspectives from different cultures. Hi, my name is Natasha, I'm from Austria. I'm very happy that I chose MSc Marketing because it combines a lot of different aspects from the industry. From psychology to sociology to financial management, it combines theoretical knowledge with um, practical skills required by the industry. All the assignments are a mix of creative work and academic writing. Hi, my name is Keisha and I chose to study an MSc in Marketing at the University of Hertfordshire. I find the course combines theory and practical and applies it to real industry challenges, which will help me develop a foundation to become a marketing professional. Thank you, Kate. Next one. I think that's all from my talk, and I'm happy to answer any questions later on regarding your program study, regarding the business school, or any information I've covered about. So I'll now hand over to Kat, um, talk about how to prepare for the start of term. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Susie. Um, I can see lots of questions have come in already as well, um, which is brilliant that everybody's so engaged. But yeah, if we if you do have any um, Hertfordshire Business School specific questions, then we'll be asking them to Susie shortly. Now, I'm just going to run through a quick update about start of term preparation. So some things that you can do now to help you be more organised, ready for September. So lots of you will be on various points in your application journey. Now, I can see there's been a lot of questions about this in the Q&A. So please do listen to this part. And then anybody who's asked a question about this will be able to mark them as answered live just so we can help then get the list of questions down. So you can see on the line on the right there, um, a lot of you will be in the point where you're clearing your last minute conditions. You should have all paid your deposit to secure your place on the course. And then you might have been invited to complete a sponsorship interview or upload financial documents for check-in. If you are waiting to complete your sponsorship interview, make sure that you've followed the instructions from the admissions team. So they might have invited you to upload a declaration video and use the time while you're waiting for your interview to make sure that you are prepared for that phone call. So keep an eye on your emails from the admissions team. For those of you who've been invited to send in your financial documents, again, follow the guide that's been sent by the admissions team. Make sure your documents are matching up with the examples in there um, to know that you're all ready for your visa application. And once you've cleared all your conditions and all your documents are in order, that's when the team will issue the CAS to you. Now, we're just going to do another short poll. So what activity are you most looking forward to participating in? So outside of your academic um, criteria, there's also some social activities that will be going on around hearts where you can get together with students from other schools as well. So I'm going to launch this poll now. Now, there might be things on here that you haven't had a chance to research yet. You might not have been aware of. So this is a great chance to get these things on your radar so that you know what's waiting for you at hearts. 
So that poll's on your screen now. Please feel free to take part. Um, so you might be looking forward to joining a society. So the SU has lots of different societies from uh, dancing to baking to more academic and religious groups. If there's a particular interest you've got and a society doesn't already exist, you can speak to your SU reps and they'll help you set up a society as well so you can meet like-minded friends at university. You might also be interested in exploring the local area of Hatfield or exploring in London in your free time as well, seeing some of the sites around there. Taking part in Heart Squad Sports. So Heart Squad are a team at the university who put on a lot of sporting events. Some of those are free, so you can get involved and have a go at some sports that you might not have tried before. And they've got things for all abilities from beginner to advanced as well. And they even do some competitions against other universities, so you can get involved in that. And then we have attending an SU event at the forum. So the SU do a lot of events. We've got the forum right on campus. So keep an eye out for those on the events calendar as well. Now, I'm going to close the polling now. Um, so if you are just hovering over the submit button, please do press that now. I can see lots of results coming in. Excellent. So we'll have a look at those together. So really mixed, which is great because it shows you're doing your research and you know what's waiting for you when you join us. So lots of people looking at joining a society, um, exploring the local areas in London, Heart Squad, and also getting involved with those events that will be happening as well. We're going to talk a bit more about those when I go through um, some orientation and freshers things that you want to keep an eye out for. So this is excellent to know that you've already started having a look. OK, so we will be helping you prepare for the start of term. Um, we'll be bringing out our pre-arrival guide, which is hosted on our website. We'll be updating that especially for the September 2023 intake. Now, we'll send you an email once that's ready. There is a lot of information in there, so you can take your time to read through it. But there's lots of different things such as packing checklists, um, helping you navigate through the airports, getting from the airport to the campus using public transport or our free airport collection service, registration guidance, BRP collection, foods that you might want to try in the UK and security as well. So lots of information in there. So please do take your time to read through that. Once it's ready, we will email it to you. To accompany our pre-arrival guide, we also do our webinars similar to the format of this one, um, where we'll just be going through some of the key points in the guide to help you and answering your questions as well. You'll get an invite to those later on in the summer and you can join and we can have a chat about things that you need to prepare. Um, COVID, you don't need to worry about travel restrictions anymore. Travel's gone back to normal in the UK, so you don't need any COVID tests, quarantine or passenger locator form. You can travel just as you're used to, but please do check your country's requirements if they want you to wear a mask on the plane or through the airport or for any transit countries you might be having stop off flights in as well. Now, when we come to orientation and freshers week, so orientation week, that's going to be the week starting the 18th of September. Now, there will be free airport collection, usually that weekend before the 16th and 17th. That's run by our Dean of Students team, and that will be free airport collection from Heathrow to campus. You do need to book a seat on the coach. And again, we'll be releasing more information soon so you can book a slot on those coaches if you want to. But otherwise, orientation week will be starting on the 18th of September. It's a really great week to come and join. You can get to the university earlier than when your courses start and you'll just be able to start learning your way around the campus, joining in with some events, making friends as well. So do check that out and try and be here early enough to start that as well. And it'll give you a chance to settle in before main start of term. And then Freshers Week will be starting on the 25th of September. Now, some of you might have courses that have an earlier start date than these. Please do check your own course start date. It'll be on your offer letter and make sure that you are in the UK and ready to start your studies on your start date. If you're not sure, you can let us know, but check your offer email first so you can see your start date. During orientation and freshers, this is where you'll be able to meet the SU reps, join some of the clubs and societies, and you can also meet some of the religious groups, the chaplaincy as well. We do have the key on College Lane campus, which is our multi-faith space, 
and a multi-phase space on de Havilland as well. So you can use those once you're a student. Now, a few things that you can do now to help you. So the university has created a free online module called Getting Ready to Study at Hearts. Again, there's lots of information in there and it's all to help you. So it is worth it. Take the time and work your way through it. But in here, there's things like meeting some of the support teams on campus, tips for academic success. Um, there's also some videos from existing international students about things they wish they'd known before starting at the university. So check that out. We'll again, we'll email you around the link, but it's that link that's on the screen now. Accommodation. This is again really important. You must arrange your accommodation before you travel to the UK. This is actually the perfect time to book your accommodation. Um, so there is room still available on campus and we would always recommend yep. you to live on campus where possible. You can apply for your on campus accommodation with your eight digit ID and your conditional offer to study and the accommodation team will be able to sign a room to you once your deposit has cleared. Living on campus does bring additional benefits. You don't need a, U, um, a UK guarantor. You get all your utility bills, Wi-Fi and contents insurance included. Um, you can walk to your lectures as well, so you don't have to pay commute costs. And also you've got 24 seven support if you need it. So if you accidentally lock yourself out of your room, you've got that support that's straight away there to help you. Now, if you are looking to live off campus, please do live in the Hatfield area. So you've still got that option to walk to lectures, um, but do look at PAL landlords. So what PAL is, it's a scheme that the university has set up with the local council. And it's a website where all the properties displayed on there, um, the landlords have been vetted, the properties are in a good state of repair and they match the photos as well. But as an absolute maximum, um, you, you must live within a two hour commute or 30 mile radius from campus. Now, I do stress that is the maximum. We would recommend you to live within walking distance of the campus because commuting can get expensive. It can take time. Um, but this is the maximum you're allowed to live from campus, not the recommended, the maximum. If you are looking to live off campus, check out the commute costs, the times as well. Use National Rail and Uno Bus. Make sure that you can get in for those early morning or home for those later evening lectures. You need to be aware that train prices, you're going to have to pay peak train prices to get in for your morning lectures as well. So take that into account when you're comparing the price of the on campus versus off campus properties. Um, and as we've said, make sure that you are clear in those final conditions so that you can progress further towards CAS stage as well, because the team can issue CAS now for anybody who has cleared all their conditions and any additional requirements requested of them. Now, we're just going to watch a final short video um, about some of the accommodation and the communal spaces on campus that are here waiting for you. Hi, I'm Elizabeth, and today I'm going to show you all of the amazing things of why did I choose to live on College Land campus. First, let's start with my bedroom. It's so close to classes and contains everything that you need. And here's my kitchen, where I get to meet all of my flatmates. However, for larger gatherings, we've got common rooms. Perfect for everything from group yoga to movie nights. And not to forget the oval. It's great to have a team of support staff to help with just about everything. And a gym for those post-lecture workouts. That really is everything you need on campus. Whether you like to go for a walk outdoors, or if you like to get your focus to the max in the RRC. Looking for a quiet space to pray, meditate or reflect? Well, the key is the place to visit. Whatever faith you have or even you have none. Here in the Hutton Hub, you can access to all kinds of information with our Ask Hearts Hub. For the best night out, I definitely visit 77 here at the forum. Over to you, Judith. Hi everyone, welcome to De Havilland. I'm Judith and I'll be showing you why living here is amazing. The bedrooms are particularly great. You have absolutely everything you need in here. Say hello to the kitchen, where all the cooking and catching up with flatmates happens. In need of support, there's a whole team of staff ready to help here in the accommodation office. And just next door is the common room. Many a games night have been hosted in here. When you're feeling extra energetic, you can head over to the Sports Village. 
It's great to come over after classes too, get a workout in at the gym, or take a dive in the huge pool. Just like College Lane, this campus has its very own LRC. And also, the beautiful Cafe Ambition, with its great music and even better coffee. So that's a wrap. Thanks for coming along with us. Hope to see you on campus soon. Now, if you do want to see any other accommodation room tours, you can check those out on the University of Hertfordshire's YouTube channel. Students who are living in the rooms have done a tour as well. Um, for anybody who's asking about the prices of accommodation, they're on our website. Um, they usually ranges between about £120 per week up to about £250, but it does depend on the room type you want. So the more expensive rooms, they will be the ones where you've got sort of your kitchenette and your bathroom facilities all private and the cheaper rooms are the ones where you share. And once you've applied for accommodation, got a room offer, um, the accommodation team will actually ask you how you want to set up your payment plan. So are you looking to pay in installments? Um, and they'll go through those options with you there as well. Um, but thank you very much for listening to us, everybody. Um, we know it's a lot of information. So if you do have any course specific questions for Susie as well, this is the perfect time to ask them. So pop them in the chat and you can thumbs up other students' questions as well if they've already asked something you're interested in. Thank you so much, everybody. Yeah, brilliant questions coming through. Um, Susie, I've got quite a few people asking about our MBA. Um, so quite a few people have said, I've applied for the MBA, but I haven't chosen my speciality. Um, is a healthcare MBA still an option for September? And is our MBA programmes accredited? Um First of all, I think you don't have to worry about the, the stream that you're in. I think that will be discussed when you arrive here. Your program leader will host the onboarding event. So mainly, I think for MBA, you'll study the same uh, modules in the for the taught modules in the semester A and B. When you come to different streams, it's mainly when you do your final sort of a project time. So no worries about it uh, at this stage. Okay, It's great that you are thinking ahead. Um, for accreditation, I'm not aware of any accreditation at this stage for MBA, um, but obviously our programs are all, you know, widely recognized, you know, regulated, as you know. Yeah, but I think um, hopefully you'll join your onboarding activity starting on the 26th of September when your course starts. So further details will be given by your program leader. Okay. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Susie. We've got another question um, from a student. They've said, what um, are the assessment methods that would be used um, across our programmes in the School of Business? That's a really great question, isn't it? So you're already thinking ahead of how you can achieve high, I hope. <laughs> um, so I think in the business school, obviously students, I did see a couple of, uh, a couple of other programmes, see how many subjects you're studying uh, and, uh, and, you know, the assessment as well. So I think... Uh, it depends on the on the module. Each module may have different type of assessment, but at the program level, your program leader would oversee, um, you know, the assessment landscape we call. So you have a to ensure you have a diverse range of assessment. So, for example, that could include group assessment and individual assessment. So that could be uh, written and spoken. So you may be able, you may be asked to write a 2000 word essay, academic essay or report, or you may be asked to do a presentation, post a presentation or oral presentation. And also there might be an in-class test. So in your tutorials, you may be asked to do some quizzes, yeah? So it could be online, or you could be given for student doing accounting, given the paperwork to do the calculations. So I think I would like to say it's a wider range of assessment. Um, and uh, you will have a sort of assessment landscape, hopefully provided by your program leader. And you can always know what assessment the particular subject is uh, as soon as the course starts, because on the cover site, you will see assignment section, assessment section, and then you will be able to find, oh, there's one assignment for this module only. And you will find they, there may be two pieces of assessment for this module. Or oh, some modules could have three, which I used to teach, have three, including online tests, including reflection, 500 words, including a 2,000 words. Um, for some students, they may have to do a 
10,000 word um, dissertation or project at the end. So just say, you know, it's very diverse. It's not, it's not like some of our students used to exams, sit in the exams room. So it's very diverse. A lot of them, as I mentioned, you know, you have to do it independently, individually or with your teams or role or written. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Susie. And really worth um, people being aware of those different assessment methods as well for people to prepare for this intake. Susie, I can see a lot of people are asking, how many classes um, will we have each week? Um, is that dependent on what module people are undertaking as well? Indeed. Um, I think most of the programmes have four, four single modules in a semester. So one semester we, we have three semesters, mainly for September, for semester A from September till January, you know, just, just straight after the new year. And then we have semester B from, from January until May this time. And we have semester C, you know, from this time until September. So normally for students, um, students on MBA and uh, management, they have 30 credit, which called double modules. That means each semester they do two modules. So two double modules. Each semester, every student has to study 60 credit. For students or, or other programs, that means they do four single modules, four modules, each module have 15 credit. So it's really, but in general, students are expected to come on campus. We try to avoid five day a week timetable. So give students a bit of a break. So it's likely to be three or four days um, schedule of their timetable. So where they have scheduled sessions where they have to come on campus. But we also have online classes where some of the tutorials may be delivered on online additional support session. And we have this academic English, as I mentioned, embedded English and skill session, which is delivered online as well. So please be prepared for three or four days um, coming on campus because we understand your full time students like, you know, full time work, how we're expected. And that refers to back to what Kat said. So carefully consider where you live, okay? So although we see we are very close to London, from station to station, King's Cross is 20 minutes, but you have to take into consideration from your home to your local to your local station. Is there a me? And then and the commute as well, the bus or is walking distance, so on and so forth, the additional cost, the peak time of peak time, nobody cleans in your kitchen, nothing's included, you have probably find a guarantee sort of thing. So we really encourage students to live on campus accommodation on that note, <laughs> not only for attendance, but also engagement with other curriculums, you know, additional activities we have seen. If something's scheduled in the evening, you know, students all oh, live off campus, bus finishes at, at 10, for example, they can't stay till midnight for these getting wild sessions. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Susie. And yes, we always recommend students live on campus. Absolutely. It's brilliant, the accommodation we have here. Thank you. I'm so sorry, Susie. I'm going to come back to you for another question. I will give you a breather in a minute. We've got lots of um, students asking, how do they find out a bit more about their modules? Is it when they've registered or is it before they register? Can they find out a bit more details about their modules that they'll be studying? Okay. I'm going to share my screen and I hope obviously it seems some of the students haven't done that research before they choose the course. So um, I uh, can I stop other can I quickly share my screen? Okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You should be able to share over the top of you can find your course you can just search the search you know um search button you can search for example you want to search for msc uh, international business this is the program i used to lead so once you type in this course uh, the keywords the course it will take you to all the programs about international business so for example what it comes here it has a number of undergrad programs but screw down, you will find the three programs related to international businesses. One is with placement, MSc postgrad. One is the one year. One, uh, the third one is advanced research. So for example, I've just clicked the generic one, one year. Click in the course uh, page. You will find out why you choose, you know, kind of uh, information. And then uh, above the course has all the links to the three. But screw down, 
you will find more information about the modules. Can you see my screen, everybody? Yeah. So you find all the modules you are going to be studying throughout your program. If you are really, if you really want to get, get to know more information, say, oh, I want, I want to know which module I study first when I join you in September. Do you find your program leader's details, for example? And you are able to find the program specification. Can you see my screen here? Further course information. So the, the modules there are all the modules you're, you're studying. But if you want to find out specifically when the modules delivered and you know what's the assessment, it has a give you an indication about the coursework. Mostly it's 100%, but could, as I said, it could be consisting of a number of different ones. So click download you will find the program specification, okay? And also you can find the course fact sheet over there. So this is really where every single of you should do your research before you join the course. So you know what is expected from you, okay? So you will know if you go into the program spec, you will know for IB, you're studying global economy, in your first semester, marketing course cultures, and then international HRM, and business research methods, okay? So just to note, the modules listed here are not in this chronological order when they are delivered. Is, is that clear to everybody? Yeah, that's absolutely brilliant. Okay. Thank you so much, Susie. So yes, after the webinar, everybody, you can go and check out your course page and you can find out all of your modules there. Susie, I do have another question I'd really love to ask you. Um, and I think it's a great question and it's really showing that this student's really preparing for their studies. And they've said, are there any kind of certain tools or softwares that we should be familiar with before we start our course? And again, I would say students, I would say students go visit their course page and then sometimes it, it specifies, for example, you need a laptop, for example, management, you need a laptop, a Windows laptop, because you're going to use Power BI software, for example. So some, so many of the programs have put it in the course, course factor sheet you need to do. Uh, but I think in general, students should be, and I, I expect, know they general generic in the Microsoft skills using PowerPoint, Excel, Word, where you have to do your essays report, you know, PowerPoint, do your presentations, Excel, when you do data analytics, for example. But there will be for students especially do their dissertations, you may be um, taught or introduced to some specific data analysis software, for example, SPSS for quantitative data, and Vivo for qualitative data. Yeah. And for students on, um, bank, business analytics and consultancy, you may be taught, uh, you know, Python, for example. But I would say uh, we don't expect you to have, you know, full knowledge and information. So we expect you to, you know, the, the lecturers will introduce you to it, but you have to do a lot of further study and research yourselves alongside your studies. Yeah, please visit your program, um, you know, the course page to find out a little bit more. And in the meantime, please do engage with your studies and do do your, you know, expected independent learning alongside your course because you can't expect your teacher to teach you this week two hours to teach you the full functionality, for example, of a particular software. There's a lot of independent studies linked to it. I think that's a good question. Highlight the engagement in independent learning as well. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Susie. And I've got another question for you, Thank Susie. You. A lot of people are asking whether they can learn a language alongside their course. And could we ask that for both undergraduate and postgraduate courses? Thank you. I think for some undergraduate courses, obviously language is uh, is part of the course curriculum, is embedded in their course. For postgraduate students, currently they can choose a language as a as an additional language. And I think um, currently we had a scheme of language for all, they didn't have to pay. Uh, but obviously this is a further discussion. We know our students on second year are currently doing a language for free. So obviously if any of the students are interested in a language, please do speak to your program leader after your arrival. So they will be able to put you in touch with the, with the head of the language and to find out, for example, whether the the course is currently full, whether there's still availability, a way you can join, whether you're a beginner, whether you're advanced. So that's all um, subject to further discussion. But in short, every student have the opportunity to do a language. 
That's brilliant. What great opportunity as well. Thank you so much, Susie. Kat, it's now your turn, finally. Um, we've got quite a few students asking whether they're able to work whilst they're studying and what the rules are in relation to that and whether the university will support students to find part-time jobs and whether any are available on campus as well. Are you happy to answer those for us? Yeah, absolutely. So um, you can work usually up to 20 hours per week during your studies on your student visa do check your specific visa allowance um, there are some part-time jobs on campus however these are quite in demand so chances are you you probably wouldn't end up with one of those but some students on campus will do things like being our uni buddy assistants they might do campus tours or help answer questions at an open day a lot of students will look further afield for part-time jobs so they might get jobs in any of the local towns working in um, sort of shops or uh, restaurants things like that just for part-time job work now we do have the careers and employment team at the university so you can use them um, for assistance with looking at jobs and and career moves and then there's also the online platforms as well that you will get access to when you become a student um, so there, there will be a lot of resources to help you However, please do make sure that your studies come first. You know, that's the, the main reason that you are coming to the UK and coming to Hearts is to, to study and get your qualifications. You need to make sure that the majority of your time is putting that effort into getting the best grades that you can for your course, because that's the most important. Um, any part time work should come second. You need to make sure you've got a good study work life balance and also time for relaxing as well. Um, because of the maintenance that you need to show for your student visa, ideally you need to make sure that you do have enough to support you while you are doing your studies, just so that they can be your main focus as well. And any part-time jobs you do have is just a little extra that you're not relying on um, in, in order to be staying in the UK. Brilliant, thank you so much, Kat. And Kat, I've got another great question for you. So it's showing a lot of students are very organised, which is what we like to see. Students are asking, when is the earliest that we can arrive in the UK before the start of our course? So check on your visa once it's been granted. Always make sure you're travelling within those allowance dates of your visa. But I think usually they will grant you to allow up to about a month before your course start date. Do make sure that you have checked with your accommodation provider what the earliest you can access your room is so you're not leaving yourself without somewhere to stay. Um, but yeah, please do arrive in the UK as soon as you can around those things just so you've got time to settle in, learn your way around before your course starts as well. So I'd say definitely um, have a look at those orientation weeks. We'll be sending you more information out about those soon as well. Um, and yeah, get, get to the UK in advance of your start date, just so that then you're all settled, ready for your programme. Brilliant. Thank you, Kat. Kat, I'll finish with you for one final question, unless you think we have time for any more. But we have quite a few people asking about what kind of social activities and sports groups they can join. So a few people have said, is there a dance club that students can join? Is there a volleyball or cricket club as well that they can join? Are you happy to answer that for us? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you'll you'll be pleased to know we have all of those things and more. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's lots of student societies. Heart Squad do the organised sports as well. Um, do check those out so you can just go on to the Hertfordshire SU website and then if you click through to the societies page you can see that there's lots of different dance societies so depending on what type of dance you're into um, you might want to join a specific one and then for the Heart Squad again if you just search um, University of Hertfordshire Heart Squad Sports you'll be able to come up with their page as well you can see all the different things that they get involved in but yeah there is volleyball societies there's cricket teams um, dancing rugby lacrosse hockey lots of different things um, so yeah there'll be there'll be plenty to keep you busy um, definitely okay. can I inject here uh, yes yes I guess. Uh, and I think Kat earlier promoted the mock course, uh, the massive open open online uh, course, um, getting ready to study at house. If all of you, I mean, it's accessible to all of you, please do access and engage with the module. You will find there's a particular section called getting active. And obviously covers a lot of student questions about careers and uh, employment as well. And then we'll give you the range of activities, you know, the sports village and then the active students activities as well. And also obviously that link to the athletic union as well. 
and then you know student union information as well so please do engage with that module find out more about the campus life and activities okay Excellent. Great guidance there from Susie. So yes, make sure that you do check out all the resources we have included today. Now, I'm so sorry if we weren't able to answer your question live. We've had such good engagement from everyone here today. Um, if you do still need help with anything, please do contact your in-country reps or you can contact our team in the UK at international at hearts.ac.uk. Um, we will be running some Instagram live sessions over the coming months as well, so you can check those out. Well, we'll just be giving a bit more information about things like on-campus accommodation, student experience and a few things to run up to the start of term as well, like registration guidance. Um, here's some examples of some previous sessions we did. They are available on Reels on our Instagram channel, so you can watch those back as well if you want to, if you missed them. And then um, just to say, again, if you do have any urgent questions, you're welcome to call our team in the UK as well. But otherwise, have a look around the website. A lot of the things we have discussed today are actually available on the web pages. So make sure that you are doing your own research as well. Um, now, I'm just going to play one short video just to see some extra sites around campus. Uh, but that is the end of the session today. Colleagues, if you do have other meetings and appointments you need to go to, thank you so much for your time. Um, and we look forward to welcoming everybody in September. <laughs>